Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Cope. I'm a member of the leadership team here at RTI Innovation Advisors, and I'd love to welcome you to our webinar on best practices in virtual innovation. You know, we've, we've all been thrown into a rather disruptive time in our lives, thanks to this novel coronavirus. My main hope today is that you and your loved ones are doing well, staying healthy, and will remain so during the duration. Um, we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty right now in our lives, and this webinar came together rather quickly as we've been asking ourselves, how can we, uh, as innovation advisors, be of greatest value to our clients and our friends and our followers in this time of, of great disruption? Many of us are new to working remotely, uh, and this is an area that we have a, a lot of experience in, and so we felt that a primer on effective event design, planning, and tools for virtual engagements would be a good place for us to start. Uh, we'd love to hear of other ideas um, that uh, we could use for upcoming webinars. We'll, we'll have a place for you to weigh in on that in a few moments, but uh, think of this as the first of, of many potential interactions we can have to help each other through this difficult time. Some of you are in the audience are longstanding clients of ours, and we, we greatly appreciate the partnership and relationships that, that we've, we've had over the years. Um, others perhaps are maybe less familiar with us, so let me kick things off with a, with a brief introduction to who we are. RTI Innovation Advisors is a mission-driven innovation consultancy, and as you can see on the screen, our, our mission is to help our clients turn insights into new products, new services, new technologies that can have meaningful human and business impact. We get up every morning thinking about how we can be contributors. How can we make a difference? How can we maximize the impact that innovation has in our lives? And we remain true to that mission and true to supporting our clients even in difficult times like the one we're experiencing. We work in three related areas of innovation. We could go to the next slide. Uh, starting on the top right, uh, we work with clients helping them discern complex futures and better understand a pathway to how to win in those complex futures. We bring best practices in road mapping, and foresighting, and other strategic futures methodologies to our clients, helping them understand, apply, learn uh, how to use these tools for more effective long-range planning. We also do a fair amount of work in the insight space, helping explore the world of the possible in technology and market and user insights to help our clients uh, understand the best options that they have at their disposal to uh, execute their, their growth plans. And lastly, we help connect technologies and market, finding those right partners, those right pathways so that new enabling technologies can find their way to the market and have the greatest impact possible. We're on a mission. Uh, we're a mission-driven innovation consultancy, and that's part of uh, that. That comes from being part of a larger global research institute. We're part of RTI International, which is also a mission-driven organization. We've got 6,000 people around the world. We're doing close to a billion dollars a year in related research and services, and we work in a wide range of fields. Uh, many that are topical to us right now: epidemiology, for example drug development, uh, test methods, food safety, clean energy, uh, a, huge, a huge array of intellectual horsepower that we are uh, connected to and a part of. RTI has a mission to improve the human condition by turning knowledge into practice, and we feel like our mission coincides and nests very nicely with that overall uh, institute mission. I hope that gives uh, a little bit of context about who we are and think that we are active in doing and uh, help set the stage for the content that we're going to walk through today. Uh, let me turn things over to my colleague, Jim Redden, who's going to walk us through the best practices. Jim, take it from here. All right. Thanks, Jeff. So hello, everybody. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, my name is Jim Redden, uh, and I'm coming to you live today from my dining room here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, no doubt many of you are, are joining today from similarly unexpected places and juggling some new work-related challenges, uh, different situations as kids may be home from school unexpectedly or other new challenges arise, right? Yet amidst this 
chaos and kind of some of the uncertainty facing us in the near future, we're all trying to keep our innovation teams, our businesses, all these initiatives moving forward to, to help out kind of to return to a place of some sense of normalcy or progress, right? So as we're adapting to this new working reality, we have a few goals for today that we wanted to kind of share. We're hoping to share some of our best practices with virtual event design. So we have some best practices and then also some tools that we think we've found helpful in our experience running innovation teams remotely, running innovation events remotely. And we're hopeful that these both design principles and tools are useful to you uh, as you try to make progress on your innovation initiatives. So with that, let's go back to kind of the outline for the webinar that we're having today. We're going to start with a little bit of uh, kind of information and sharing of best practices on virtual collaboration. Then we're actually going to take the, the 80 plus people who are here and demonstrate a short virtual collaboration session where we'll have the ability to show you a few of the tools that we like to use, whether it's breakout rooms or collaborative whiteboarding spaces. And then we'll have a, a good section at the end for question and answer where we can get into some of the, the nitty gritty perhaps a little bit. Okay, so right now there are a lot of new challenges that people are facing related to virtual collaboration. Certainly we wanna keep our teams moving forward while we're all remote. We also have questions about converting or changing previously scheduled events to virtual events. Some people are trying to figure out what tools they may need to invest in to facilitate remote work. And a lot of people are just asking the question, how do we design effective, productive virtual engagements, right? So uh, Cameron mentioned earlier that there's a chat window that you can use. Um, I would encourage you to use that chat window to let us know about the current challenges that led you to accept the invitation to this webinar. What is it that you're currently facing? What are you hoping to learn? That'll give us some context and can help shape the conversation that we have today to make it most useful to you. I wanna start by first framing what we're talking about today in the context of different types of virtual engagements. In one hand, there's webinars. These are kind of didactic information from one to many. There's also virtual collaborative sessions. This is where there's more engagement, more participation, more discussion, often a joint output we're seeking to achieve. And when it comes to webinars, right, there's different roles. There's the content creator or the webinar host, then there's the audience or the participants. Similarly, virtual collaborative sessions have different roles associated with them from planner and session designer to the in-room facilitator and then of course the participants. In today's session, we're gonna be talking about the planning and session design because that's really the first step. That's the, the, the place you wanna start when you're considering a lot of the challenges that we just mentioned. How do I design an effective virtual session, including tools and principles? In a future webinar, we'll touch more on kind of perhaps the, the facilitation best practices. We'll introduce a few of those today, but the majority of our focus will be on event design. So when I started to put together this content, right, uh, I have a lot of uh, kind of experience and best practices, but I started by going around to some of my colleagues within the innovation advisors who are also really great people, smart people, uh, a lot of experience doing virtual event design. And I asked them, what is your one piece of best advice for someone who's planning a virtual collaboration session? So I'm going to start by sharing what they had to say. First up, Amanda Rose. She said, there's more planning and preparation involved to do virtual collaboration well than you probably think. I think that's spot on. It's definitely more work than most people realize to put together an effective virtual collaboration event. Next, I talked to Moline. Moline said, people often immediately jump to their favorite virtual tools. But more important, even more critical, is good virtual design. Again, I it's like, that's spot on. That's exactly right. 
when it comes to virtual collaboration, the planning and preparation ends up being the majority of the work. The execution, and when you see people execute virtual events flawlessly, no, there's a lot of thinking and preparation that went into making that work seamlessly, right? So that's the first thing to keep in mind. If you're thinking about designing and running virtual collaboration events, give yourself enough time and resources to do it well. Next, I talked to, to my colleague, Carrie, and he said, don't look for ways to replicate the in-person process. Look for ways to virtually accomplish the same objective. I thought that was spot on as well. And it reminded me uh, of some recent experiences I've had. Uh, you know, of course, all, all the conferences and large gatherings that have recently been canceled, many of them have decided to put their conferences online. And with the best of intentions, I'm sure they looked at the design of a virtual conference and they said, how can we make sure that the information that those on the stage were going to convey through sessions, through parallel tracks, through keynotes, gets out to our audience. And I've been to several uh, virtual conferences so far that have done that quite effectively. But in many cases, what the designers of those virtual events failed to realize is that there's other reasons that people come to conferences. In fact, one of the main reasons that people come to conferences oftentimes is the networking, right? Is meeting new people, is having conversations with people you might not otherwise run into. And effective virtual design recognizes those different objectives. And rather than saying, how can I exactly map to the plan I had before and just transition everything into a virtual environment? We wanna step back and say, how else might we accomplish the same objective of stimulating random collisions between people with shared interests, giving them space to have a conversation, and ultimately accomplishing that secondary, or in some cases, primary objective of meeting new people at a conference. So Carrie's advice, I think, is spot on. And we'll be talking today about how to think through what those objectives of your either in-person or virtual event were, and how to accomplish those objectives with some new and unique virtual tools. That brings me to kind of my piece of advice. And as I was thinking about this question, I said, I think at its core, good virtual event design begins with the basics of good event design. And then layered on top of that are special considerations of the virtual environment. So in this webinar today, as we talk about best practices, we're gonna be talking about both good event design, some of the fundamentals, and then what are the virtual considerations that layer on top of that good event design to help make these most effective? At the end of uh, the webinar today, we're gonna touch on a, a lot of different topics. But we're also gonna send out after the fact a couple of resources that we think are particularly helpful in your planning process. The first comes from our RTI Innovation Advisors here. It's a guide for that good, the principles of good event design, specifically focused around innovation related events. And then the second is from our friends at Mural, which is a guide to facilitating remote workshops. It gives you a lot of extra considerations for both the tactics as well as some of the strategy that layers on top of that really good event design to create great virtual events. Our recipe for virtual collaboration success kind of boils down to four parts, right? So the first and the foundation, as we kind of just mentioned, good event, virtual event design, virtual collaboration success begins with the proven principles of event design that hold both in the virtual environment and in the physical environment. Next, of course, we have to layer on, as we mentioned, the considerations or the constraints that we have with remote teams. Next, once we have those considerations in place, we pick the tools to match the objectives. And we'll be talking today about what some of those tools are and which ones pair nicely with different objectives. And then last but not least, once you have all of that, if you layer on top of it, skilled virtual facilitation and execution, that's our four part recipe for how to achieve virtual collaboration success. Okay, so to help with the planning process here, 
we have laid out, you know, a general, several general steps. Of course, at the highest level, you want to plan your event, facilitate the session and follow up. But just like that iceberg image kind of showed us, there's a lot of work here in that planning phase. And we're not going to cover all these stages in depth today. Instead, we're going to dial in and focus on the ones that have the most, uh, I think, impact when you switch from the physical space to the virtual space. So we're going to talk about how to align objectives, which is the foundation for everything that we're talking about. Then considerations for people, place, and time, and then how to select the activities and tools that will help you accomplish those objectives of your virtual collaboration session. At the end, we'll give some tips and tricks for how to facilitate virtual sessions effectively. And of course, in the follow-up resources, there'll be a lot more information on that as well. Okay, so let's start with aligning objectives. Really, in both virtual event design and, and kind of in-person event design, this is really one of the most important parts. Getting clear with your team on the objectives for an individual session is the, is the foundation that will lead to later success. So a few tips here. Um, first is to remember that business objectives and session objectives are not always the same. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example. Um, a business objective may be my innovation team needs to develop a, a technology roadmap for the next three years. That's a, absolutely a great business objective and something that in light of the recent developments globally, you may be having to reevaluate that, that strategy or that roadmap. A session objective takes a look at a single engagement. Maybe it's a one hour meeting, maybe it's a half day workshop, maybe it's a two day event. And we say, all right, what is the objective of this particular session and how does it fit in the context of the broader business objective? We don't wanna go into a one hour session and say our objective for that session is to develop a new technology roadmap. It's not gonna set you up for success. So tip number one, be clear about the difference. Think critically about how your session objectives line up with your overall business objectives. Then we get to two tips that are a little bit more specific to the virtual environment, right? So we want to identify both what I call stated and latent objectives. So for a, for a collaboration session with an external entity, maybe you're bringing your suppliers in in order to uh, talk about how you're going to adapt to some of the, the new changes. You want a collaborative session with them. Some of the stated objectives may be to have a plan at the end of this session or something. But one of the latent objectives could be that you want to make sure that participants leave with confidence that you have a plan for how to adapt to these challenging times. Instilling confidence in your suppliers is an absolutely valid objective, but it may not be one you would have thought of articulating as a stated objective. So in this environment, we wanna make sure we're really clear about both the stated and the latent objectives. Last but not least, there's always going to be some additional considerations due to the virtual environment. This includes additional objectives you may have. Your innovation teams are likely socially distanced, right? A new objective in this environment may be, how can we ensure that our teams stay connected in this time of uh, uh, remote work? Okay, so if we have our objectives in place, we then move on to some of the more logistical, tactical considerations of people, time, and place. My best advice as you're designing these events here from the start is you wanna make sure that you're setting realistic expectations for what you can accomplish in a single virtual session. I would say that by and large, because of technical difficulties and then just kind of the, the pace of communication in the virtual environment, you want to give more time than you would in a physical setting to accomplish the same objectives. And just like in physical sessions, you don't want to run, you know, three hours straight with no breaks. Virtual breaks are absolutely just as important. So make sure you're designing and thinking about how you're going to incorporate those throughout your plan. Uh, the last two, uh, know your participants, know who, you know, their strengths and weaknesses, 
and then balance individual and group work kind of round out some high level tips for that people time, place and time category. Now, there's a lot more considerations, you know, things that get very tactical with people, time, and place, uh, whether it's time zones or kind of IT system issues. But these are a few high level strategic uh, considerations as you're designing your event, you might want to take into account. Okay, so we've got some objectives, we've thought through some of the issues related to people, place, and time. We're now ready to move on to kind of selecting some activities or tools or developing kind of the agenda that's going to get us to those stated objectives. But before you jump right into thinking about tools, do I want to use Zoom or do I want to use WebEx? Do I want to use, you know, email or some other form of communication? It's really good to map out kind of the activities that you want to accomplish in a particular sequence and then think about tools. So we've got some general objectives. Uh, we may want to get a little bit more specific and put those events in a sequence and then think about the tools that we want to use to accomplish them. So we've created some categories of objectives. These are by no means comprehensive, but they hopefully give you kind of a starting point to start thinking about. We're going to cover each of these one by one. Uh, share some of the, the keywords that you might find associated with a particular objective and then outline some tools that can be used to accomplish that. So let's, let's start with immersion, right? A lot of times to kick off uh, a particular collaboration session, we need to make sure that our teams are on the same page. Maybe we need to bring everybody up to speed on either recent developments. Maybe we need to educate them about a particular uh, event that's happened or some developments. Anytime you hear those words in your objectives, you're likely in this kind of immersion phase. Now, when you're thinking about virtual immersion, there are several tools that you can use. A lot of times we find that a lot of this immersion can be moved from the uh, kind of real time um, room to some pre work, right? So the importance of pre work, especially in the virtual environment becomes even higher. So we may send out pre-reads ahead of time. We may send out some reports we want people to become familiar with. Um, all of that can lead to making sure everybody's on the same page when we get started. Similarly, you can use things like instructive videos, whether it's a YouTube video or a TED Talk or some other online learning resource platforms to help immerse participants and bring them up to speed. Okay, what's another example here? A lot of times we get people together in collaboration because different individuals hold different pieces of the puzzle and we need to get them talking to each other. We need, we need marketing talking to product development. We need our customer insights folks talking with R and D. Um, a key function, all of these communicate, discuss, debate, all are elements of what we're kind of calling the sharing objective. And when it comes to virtual collaboration, there's a lot of really great tools for virtual sharing. It's really, how do I facilitate dialogue in the virtual environment? There's video conferencing platforms, many of them. There's virtual whiteboards for idea sharing, and we'll share some of those a little bit later. Uh, and there's even kind of more, more popular platforms like Facebook Live or Instagram Live that you can use to share in real time. When it comes to sharing in the collaborative workspace, uh, we have found, and I think research very well supports this, the importance of video in those conversations. Adding video to your discussion adds a different level of communication that's not available through conference calling and similarly not as, as available through email. So when we run virtual collaboration sessions, we encourage everybody to be prepared to and turn on their video. Now, it's not possible in all situations, especially in the current environment, it can be challenging. But the, the benefits from doing that, we think, uh, are, are very important. Okay, another thing we might be trying to accomplish, divergent thinking, brainstorming, ideating, creating lists or fresh ideas, right? There's a lot of uh, kind of generative 
uh, work that happens that's part of the goal of some of these collaborative sessions. So if you're in this phase and you're trying to generate together as opposed to in isolation, uh, some tools, some virtual tools that we found particularly helpful. Number one, collaborative whiteboards like Mural, Miro, etc. Collaborative mind map mapping software or even just real-time document collaboration are all great ways to work on something at the same time. And we'll be sharing and demonstrating a couple of these uh, in our virtual collaboration session. Okay, so once in our sessions we've diverged and we've gotten all of these ideas or all of these options out on the table, a lot of times in innovation sessions we need to prioritize, we need to down select. Sometimes we even just need to come to agreement, right? These are all elements of convergence. Uh, so when you get into a large virtual space, this convergence can seem like one of the most daunting tasks. I've got 15 people, we've been breaking out and having different separate discussions, we've shared our insights, but now how in the world are we gonna to get to an, a single idea or a single set of ideas? There are a few vir virtual tools we'd recommend for this activity. Number one, you can certainly use online polls and surveys to take the pulse of people in real time or provide them with options and get instant feedback. In addition, if you do have a long list of options, a lot of the online whiteboard software has kind of these digital dot voting or digital voting capabilities built into them as well. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna kind of pause and give you a chance to experience one of these polls slash surveys that's embedded in the Zoom platform. So we've created a poll, we're gonna send it out. We need your perspective to help us as a team converge around what webinar or what content should we produce next? This is a question, we've got a lot of options. Uh, we want your perspective. So you should be seeing here on your screen uh, a poll that pops up where you can vote. Which topic should we cover in upcoming webinars? I'll give everybody just about one minute to think about the answer and submit your vote. Okay, just about 10 seconds and then we're gonna move on, lock in your votes and we'll share the results here. This poll was created in Zoom. So this is a functionality of the software platform that we're using here today. Okay, we'll keep moving on here uh, and we'll share in a little bit some of the results. Uh, if you're having a hard time, um, go to the chat window and we'll get the, the IT support to try to help you if you uh, still are having trouble with the poll. Okay, so we've now prioritized, we've down selected to a course set now we need to make a plan. How are we gonna carry the activities, the great progress that we've made in our virtual session forward, right? There's planning, there's ownership, there's kind of accountability that we wanna drive. Uh, and this is, these are all important, critical aspects to your virtual collaboration session. What are some online resources or tools that you can use during this phase? There's a lot of different project management software out there from Asana to kind of smart sheets, which helps you create real-time Gantt charts. Uh, there's also, I'd say a little bit more basic, but still very effective tools, which is 
let's get everybody on a Zoom link, open up a Google Doc, and just kind of type out who's doing what, right? So you don't necessarily need a rich, detailed software to accomplish all of these virtual objectives. A lot of times, things that you've already been working with for many years are going to be effective. You just have to think through kind of what your objective is and how that tool can support that objective. Okay, so we've talked through some of these different elements, right? In isolation, they can be useful, depending on the length of time of your session. But the real power in thinking about these objectives comes with designing a sequence that helps you get from point A to point B. So I've got a sequence up here on the screen. Um, and the, the situation that this sequence was designed for was perhaps one of your standard ideation sessions. We need to figure out what new products or services we could develop uh, to respond to our customers' new needs in the time of uh, kind of COVID-19 and, and all of the implications. The sequence that can help us accomplish that, well, first we wanna to start to immerse people in the current situation and perhaps give them some stimulus to get them thinking outside the normal boxes of what our business usually does. Then we need to go through and generate a list of options. This is our divergent phase. Uh, this is kind of typical ideation. How many post-it notes can we get up on the board in a minute? Once we have that long list, we need to kind of have a discussion about it. Let's do some sharing before we down select and prioritize to our top three or four and develop a plan for how we're going to create a, a minimum viable product for those concepts, right? Okay, so this may be very familiar, maybe a very standard ideation, or it could be a, a new process. Either way, with that sequence in place, only then do we move to the question of what virtual tools are we going to use that will enable us to do this in separate places? So perhaps for the immersion phase, we create a PowerPoint report or pull a PowerPoint report that gives us the current state. We share that with participants ahead of time. Then we use a combination of Zoom video conferencing and Mural, which is an online whiteboard collaboration platform to execute our diverge, share, converge sequence. And then our organization, perhaps we use smart sheets to track action plans at the end result. So while you may have thought coming to tips and tricks for virtual collaboration, we'd start with, here's all these great tools that you can use. In reality, the, the design of virtual events really helps you understand what tools are going to be appropriate for a given context. Okay, so let's recap here. Of course, at a high level, good event design involves planning, facilitation, and follow-up. Today, we talked about the three steps in the planning phase around aligning objectives, considering people, place, and time, and then selecting activities and tools that align with those objectives, right? There's, of course, more, but having had this taste Let's go back to the advice from our, uh, my colleagues here at the start. I think we can all agree just from this, this quick overview we've seen, there's actually a lot of work and planning involved, maybe more than people realized at the start. Uh, critical is the design before we get into a conversation of tools. And last but not least, certainly keep in mind if you're redesigning something that you wanted to do in person, don't necessarily try to replicate the process look for ways to virtually accomplish those same objectives with perhaps some new tools. Okay, so we've talked about design. We're just gonna spend two or three minutes here. I'll give you my, my top few tips for virtual facilitation. So you've got a whole event planned uh, and you're ready to execute on it and you're in charge of running the meeting. Couple tips. First, in general, I would say either have your entire team be virtual or your entire team in person. Facilitating split teams where there's three people together in a room and three people online is the most difficult format. So it's actually the situation where everybody's remote is a little bit easier than some of these mixed situations. Of course, use part encourage participants to use video so you as the facilitator have that feedback. 
uh, set some ground rules from the beginning uh, and build in kind of that flex time so that you have capability to shift as IT issues pop up or there's that strange echo throughout that takes five minutes to diagnose and fix. Um, in terms of preparation for your facilitation, test, prepare, test the system, have participants download the software ahead of time and play with it, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're ready to go at the start. Uh, take lots of breaks. It's uh, virtual is, is no less mentally taxing than being in person. Um, and then actively manage the conversation. You may in virtual environments have to pull more people together, pull more people out who are sitting in the background uh, than you would if everybody was in the same room. And it's not up here, but I think the last thing I would recommend is be very strategic and careful about the number of people that you involve in virtual collaboration sessions. My rule of thumb for the size of an effective virtual collaboration group is the number of people who could fit around a whiteboard if you were actually in person. So there's extra constraints, there's extra challenges with being remote and using some of these tools, smaller, uh, concentrated teams are in many ways uh, easier to manage and more effective virtually than groups of 10 or 12 or 15 all trying to work at the same time. Okay, we'll send out again these a couple more resources that include a more detailed list of some tips as well as some additional design principles. But we've covered a lot of content uh, and we're going to shift here in a moment to giving you a demo. We're actually gonna run with the, the 80 plus people who are here, a little mini virtual collaboration uh, of sorts. Before I get to that, uh, we as innovation advisors are going to host some office hours over the next two weeks. We'll be sending out this link in an email as well as in the slides as, as part of the follow-up. Uh, but there's a, we've created a platform where you can sign up for maybe a 30 minute slot where if you wanna talk about the specific challenge you're facing, you have a particular meeting you're trying to redesign, maybe there's a training that you were going to do, but now you wanna to try to do it remotely, uh, we would love to talk with you about it. We were, so much of good design is context specific. So while we were able to provide some, some general best practices, uh, a lot of times the, the devil's in the details, as they say, and we love getting into those details. Okay, so we're gonna prepare now to shift to a virtual collaboration demonstration. And there are two kind of objectives that we have for this virtual collaboration demo. So we're gonna run through kind of our planning process really quickly, I'll give you the high level overview. We talked before about the importance of aligning objectives. So all you and I, you and I are now part of this collaboration session. So what are our objectives for the next 20 minutes? Number one, we know there's a lot of great insights on the call about virtual tools that you have found useful. So we want to collaboratively generate a list of virtual tools. Number two, we want to demonstrate two features that we think are particularly useful in designing innovation events. First is virtual breakout rooms enabled through the Zoom platform. And the second is the collaborative whiteboarding software that allows people to kind of edit things together in real time. Uh, and so we're going to demonstrate both of those through this. Okay, so how do, what's our sequence, right? What are we trying to do? Well, we want to immerse, I need all, all of you on the phone to be on the same page with me. Then we're going to diverge and create a list. And then we're going to share that list broadly with everybody else. So now what are the tools that we have chosen to use for this sequence of activities? Well, you just sat through the immersion phase. It's good, good 30 minute immersion using Zoom and PowerPoint. We're gonna go into the divergent phase here in Zoom and Mural, and then we're gonna send out the results through email. Okay, so some instructions. In a moment, you will automatically be placed in a breakout room with an RTI facilitator. So this is optional, it's an optional section. You'll be placed in the room, but if you do not wish to participate, you can absolutely, there's a button in the lower right, you can come back to the main room and just hang out. 
uh, until, until it's over. You will be unmuted so that you can contribute answers to a short discussion. So be prepared, keep an eye on, on your audio controls and just kind of manage that actively. We'll have about 15 minutes for this breakout and then afterwards we'll return back to the main room for a Q&A session. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Cameron and ask him to launch the breakout rooms and distribute our participants into these rooms. Uh, I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes uh, and we'll see you all back here uh, very shortly. Thank Welcome you. back everybody. Everybody's coming back at different rates from their breakout rooms. Um, so, you know, one of the key ingredients in successful virtual collaboration, <clears throat> is, of course, patience, lots of patience with technology glitches that are bound to happen. Um, hopefully you had a chance to see some of the uh, uses of an online collaborative whiteboard. What you're looking at on my screen here is kind of the large picture view of the entire space. As you can see, each breakout room had a designated space that they were working on this shared whiteboard and everybody was collaborating and adding their insights real time um, to, this, to this page. What this allows us to do after the fact is uh, kind of bring together all of the shared insights into one document and send them out after the fact. Um, there's a lot of other uses for this, this tool. You can set up a business model canvas template uh, and real-time work on that. There's you know, dozens of other ways to, to use virtual whiteboards. I did want to kind of take a few minutes before we wrap up here um, and say thank you for the great questions that came through the chat window. Um, because we're running tight on time, we're not gonna have a very long question and answer session, but I would encourage you type in any of the questions that you have in the back of your mind into that chat window, and we'll make sure that we follow up to make sure to get you the answers to those questions if you have them, if we can. Um, if you um, also uh, make sure that you identify through the platform who it is that's asking the question if your name isn't set so we know how to get in touch with you. All right, let's go back here and a couple next steps that we're going to talk about. All right, so we're going to run a second version of this same workshop next week. Uh, and so if you found this useful and you want to share this with somebody else, you can, of course, either share the recording with them or you can invite them to participate uh, on next Friday's or next Thursday's event. We'll send details in our follow up email. In addition, we said in the follow-up email, we'll, collab we'll consolidate that tools list we collaboratively generated. We'll give you that book uh, and the report on best practices for design, and you'll get a copy of today's slides. Um, we're absolutely here, ready and excited to help you. So if you have specific questions or want help thinking through the design of some of these virtual engagements, sign up for office hours or give us a call. Um, I'll ask Cameron now, just because I'm sure everybody's curious, we took that poll. Cameron, can you display the results of that poll here on the screen? They should be displayed now. All right. Okay, it looks like with 46% best practices in virtual event facilitation uh, is the winning, winning entry so far. Uh, so, th so that would kind of be a follow on. Now that you've got your event design, let's get into the nitty gritty of how to facilitate such a session. Great feedback. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll invite Jeff Cope to come back on here and give us a couple closing remarks in the last minute that we have available. Uh, yeah, just I uh, want to echo all the appreciation. We're uh, overwhelmed um, at the response to this to this invite uh, or to this event. So thank you for uh, for joining us. I hope it's been hugely helpful for you. We want to be. Um, uh, we want to be helpful to you, not only in sharing this material, but also how do you start to apply it? So we encourage, uh, check out the office hours that we'll have over the next couple of weeks. Let's, uh, let's, let's also just reach out. You see our contact information there. So reach out with questions, reach out with ideas about how we can work together, not only in these virtual events, but what you're trying to accomplish uh, in those events. Um, this is a challenging time and we need to figure out ways to lean on each other and, and help each other through it. So, we're here to, to be a supportive uh, organization in that regard. 
Um, spread the word about the web webinar next Thursday. Uh, we'd love to you know continue to help out, help our clients and followers in the best way we can. Thanks again for your time. All right, thanks everybody. We're gonna go ahead and pause the recording. Uh, I will, a couple of 